Hello, everyone. My name is Maroon. I'm the VP of Operations at Farhat Accounting Lectures, and I'm more than happy to guide you through an inventory and accounts payable cutoff exercise. Before we dive into the facts of the exercise, let us first explain the impact that cutoff misstatements could have on the balance sheet and the income statement. Examiners on the CPA exam love to test your ability to analyze and determine the effect of misstatements or adjusting journal entry on certain metrics. Therefore, it is important to be comfortable with dealing with the different scenarios that you may face in a task-based simulation through understanding and a lot of practice. Let's assume a company has a beginning inventory of 10,000 and purchases of 30,000. The cost of goods available for sale would be the addition of the beginning inventory and the purchases, 10 plus 30 equals 40. Those are the goods that were available during the whole year for the company to sell. Did the company sell all of these goods? No, because we still have an inventory of 8,000. This is the ending inventory. It's going to reduce the cost of goods sold. And the cost of goods sold is 40 minus 8. It's 32,000. This is the cost of the goods that we sold during the year. And these are our numbers without any errors. Let's assume that the company understated its purchases by 5,000. The cost of goods available for sale in this case would also be understated by 5,000, 25 plus 10. Also, we're going to assume that the ending inventory is fairly stated. It's also 8,000. What will happen to the cost of goods sold? 35 minus 8 equals 27,000. In this case, the cost of goods sold is also understated by 5,000, 32 minus 27. Regarding the impact on the balance sheet, the accounts payable would be understated because the purchases are understated. Therefore, the journal entry to debit purchases or debit inventory, depending on whether we are using the perpetual, we debit inventory. If we're using the periodic, we get a debit purchases for 5,000. However, the credit is always to accounts payable for 5,000. This journal entry was not made. Therefore, the accounts payable would be over understated by 5,000. And the cost of goods sold would be understated by 5,000 because the debit to cost of goods sold was 27 instead of 32. It was understated by 5,000 and the inventory here is correct, the credit to inventory 2000 because we had the beginning of 10 and the ending inventory is eight. There is no difference here. However, the credit to purchases is to 25 and this is what caused the understatement of cost of goods sold. It should have been 30,000. Now let's make a different assumption by considering that the purchases were also understated by 5,000 However, here in this case, the ending inventory is also understated by 5,000. What's going to happen to the balance sheet and income statement? The impact on the balance sheet would be the understatement of both inventory and accounts payable because this journal entry was not made, debit to purchases and credit to accounts payable, and because the cost of goods sold was debited for 32. Here, there is no effect on the income statement. There is no effect on the cost of goods sold because inventory was incorrectly credited for 7,000. It should have been credited for 2,000 here. And the purchases should have been credited for 30 instead of 25. So plus five here, minus five. It's zero effect on the income statement, no effect. So here in this case, the effect on the financial statements is less severe because only the balance sheet was affected and specifically the inventory, the assets and the liabilities. Now, students who rely on memorization to pass the audit exam would be surprised to see that in two cases where the purchases are understated by the same amount would lead to a different result. Because it's not about memorization. The audit is about analysis. I encourage you to practice and see, for example, the effect of the overstatement of purchases, what would happen 
to the income statement, to the balance sheet, if also the inventory was overstated, and keep practicing until you feel comfortable with solving these types of questions. Let's go ahead and get started with the exercise. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Winston Manufacturing conducted its physical inventory count on December 29, 2023 instead of December 31st, two days early because why the plant was closed for maintenance on the last two days of the year. No sales were made after the physical inventory count. During the physical count, you observed that acquisitions represented by receiving report number 1587 and all preceding ones were included in the physical count whereas inventory represented by succeeding numbers was excluded. We have to bear in mind that 1587 is the last receiving report included in inventory. On December 31st, you visited the plan and noticed that inventory represented by receiving report numbers 1588 through 1590 was received after the physical count but before the end of the year. So receiving reports from 1588, 1589, and 1590, they should have been recorded in the financial statements and included in the ending inventory. You later verified that the final inventory contained only those items included in the physical count. While testing accounts payable at December 31st, 2023, you obtain the schedule from the client to assist in testing the cutoff. This is the schedule. We have the receiving report number, the invoice amount, and whether the amount was included or excluded in accounts payable, the invoice date, the shipping date, which is very important, and the terms. Those two are very important to test the cutoff assertion. For each of the receiving reports, is there any misstatement in inventory or accounts payable? This is the first question. If so, what is the adjusting entry needed to correct the financial statements? We're going to look at each receiving report number separately, starting from receiving report 1587. Remember, this receiving report was included in inventory. Was it included in accounts payable? Yes, it was. Since it was received before year end, it should have been included, and there is no misstatement in this case. The inventory is correctly included in the physical count, and the purchase transaction was correctly recorded, and the credit was to accounts payable. For receiving report 1588, this one was not included in inventory, and since, since it was received in 2023, we know that we have debit. We have to debit inventory for 5,760. This is the invoice amount. For the accounts payable, it was not included in accounts payable, so we have to credit also AP, accounts payable for the same amount. Now inventory and accounts payable are understated because the goods were shipped in 2023. Shipped and not received, why? because the shipping terms are FOB origin. We look at the date the goods were shipped. If they were received in 2023, of course, they're going to be shipped also in 2023 on an earlier date, which is 26 December. Now, you might ask me why the purchases account is not included in the adjusting entry. And the reason is that the journal entry to recognize the purchase would have included a debit to purchase for 5,760. And the journal entry to recognize inventory would have included a credit to purchases for the same amount, which means that if the journal entries were correctly recorded, 
the purchases amount at the end of the year would have been zero. And the net effect would have been the debit to inventory and the credit to accounts payable. No effect in this case on the income statement. For receiving report 1589, the amount was included in accounts payable, which is correct because the receiving report was issued in 2023, meaning that the goods were received in 2023 and the debit to purchases for 4,120 and the credit to accounts payable for the same amount was a correct journal entry. However, this receiving report was not included in inventory. So the adjusting journal entry should include a debit to inventory for 4,120. And the credit is not to accounts payable. Accounts payable was recorded in this case. However, it is to cost of goods sold. Now, remember, in a periodic inventory system, the company does not continuously update its inventory records with each purchase or sale. Instead, at the end of the accounting period, the company determines the inventory balance through a physical count. And since the inventory was not counted, it means that the cost of goods sold was overstated by 4,120. The company eliminated this purchase of 4,120 as part of recognizing the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold and debited cost of goods sold instead of ending inventory a debited cost of goods sold. So this should this amount or this entry should be eliminated because these goods are not sold and the inventory should be recognized. And again, the purchases account was already eliminated. It has no effect on the adjusting journal entry. Now for receiving report 1590, which is the last receiving report that was issued during 2023, it was not included in accounts payable. So here we have our first statement. We need to credit accounts payable for 6,300 and it was not included in inventory, so also we have to debit inventory for 6,300. For receiving report 1591, it was included in accounts payable. So here we have to look at the terms. The terms here are FOB origin. When were these goods shipped? They were shipped on December 30, 2023, which means that these goods are correctly included in the accounts payable. But the problem here is that they haven't been included in inventory. So again, we have an adjusting journal entry that includes a debit to inventory for 7,850 and credit to cost of goods sold for 7,850 because the purchase transaction was recorded. However, the last journal entry didn't include a debit to inventory, which overstated the cost of goods sold, which is a plug figure usually in using the periodic inventory system. For receiving report 1592, the terms are FOB origin again, and the shipping date is also in 2023. So these goods should be included as part of inventory and the accounts payable should be recorded. However, this amount was not included in accounts payable, meaning that an adjusting entry should be made by debiting inventory and crediting accounts payable. Our last receiving report is 1593. The terms are FOB destination. With FOB destination, if the goods were not received during the year, they should not be included in inventory and no journal entry should be made. The goods were received after 2023, of course, since the shipping date is in 2024. And since the amount was not included in accounts payable, there is no misstatement and no adjusting entry is required because the amount should not be included in the year-end inventory count or accounts payable. Finally, this is a summary showing the effect of adjusting entries on assets, liabilities, and net income. Now, on CPA exam simulations, they might ask you the effect of the misstatements or the effects of the adjusting entries on these metrics. What you need to know is for receiving reports 1588, 1590, 
and 1592, we have the same adjusting entry. We have the same statement. So the statement has understated inventory and understated accounts payable. So the adjusting entry by debiting inventory, we are increasing inventory and by crediting accounts payable, we are increasing accounts payable. So for these three receiving reports, the net effect on assets and liabilities is a net increase. And what is the effect on net income? No effect because the debit and credit are to balance sheet accounts and not to an income statement account. For receiving report 1598 and 1591, we have also the same adjusting entry. And the misstatement was understating inventory and understating cost of goods sold. This adjusting journal entry has increased the inventory and therefore increased the assets and has increased net income. The misstatement has understated net income because it has overstated the cost of goods sold. However, here we are decreasing an expense, which means we are increasing the net income by 4,120, 7,850. The adjusting entry has a positive effect on net income. Finally, there is no effect from receiving reports 1587 and 1593. What should you do now? We should go to Farhat Lectures and look for additional resources to help you with your CPA exam preparation and audit exam preparation. Thank you for watching and happy study. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today.